Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa and if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Melissa and I do missing children cases. So today I do have a new missing child case. So today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Anna Marie Burr. She's actually, um, which is weird to me, um, I been in true crime fan for a while and uh you know you know ted bundy and she was a one of the child that was when she went missing they actually um thought he did it because he she went missing in the time that he was active um she's not he didn't confess to her um her murder um he did have a child um he did kill one child um but it was not her it was another child um but she was um he was kind of connected when she went missing because i said like like i said he was active when she went missing so let's go ahead and get started don't forget to subscribe hit that bell so you'll be notified every time i upload i'm here on mondays and fridays so let's go ahead and get started So Anna Marie, um, she was born December 14th of 1952, and she went missing on August 31st of 1961. Um, she vanished under mysterious circumstances from her home in North End section of Tacana, Washington. Like I said, um, Ted Bundy was in Tacana, Washington, and he was doing his little spree that he was doing, um, but she was at the end, she was not connected to him. Um... Her disappearance, um, which made national headlines, received re renewed attention when it was theorized that serial killer Ted Bundy, who lived in Tacoma as a teenager at the time, may have been responsible for her abduction. Actually, I think this was one of the first cases that they thought he did it because, like I, they, like they said, like I said right now, he did live in there, but he was a teenager. Um, mind you, I'm not saying teenagers don't commit don't start committing murder but he didn't i don't think his first murder i think he started when he was an adult so that's why ted bundy is brought up in this case the first of four children middle class catholic family um i'm so sorry guys i heard something give me one second okay um so she was anna was the first uh first of four children a middle class family Anna was raised in Tacoma alongside her three siblings. One, one the night of her August 31st of 1961, Anna went to sleep in her upstairs bedroom of the family home, which she shared with her three-year-old sister. At some point during the evening, Anna woke, woke her mother, barely notifying that her younger sister, oh, it wasn't Anna, it was her younger sister, who woke up in the middle of the night, um, notifying that her younger sister, recovering from a broken arm, was crying after confirming the three-year-old oh so it was anna my bad guys sorry they don't have the name they just say younger sister um barely put both girls back to bed at approximately 5 30 a.m on august 31st the family realized that bird was no longer in her bedroom now we're talking about anna search of the home revealed the front door had been left yard and living room window open at the girl nowhere to be found um, Bird disappeared, sparked a significant manhunt and terrorizing soldier from near Fort Lewis, as well as a member of National Guard through several individuals were considered potential suspect in the years immediately following the disappearance, none led to Bird's recovery. After Ted Bundy was apprehended in 1978, he was considered suspect when he was revealed that he, age 14 in 1961, had lived near the Burr resident that he, he delivered a newspaper near Burr house and that the Burr home was very close to one of Ted Bundy early shot homes where his favorite great uncle lived. A size 6 shoot print was found outside the home living room window and some investigators believe this was consistent with the teenager perpetrator after crossing with Bundy prior to his 1989 execution Burr parents publicly state that based on circumstantial evidence they believe their daughter remains may have been buried on the University of Parish Campus. In 2011, forensics testing of material evidence from the Burr's crime scene yelled an unsignificant DNA sequence for confirmation with Bendy's. As of 2023, Burr's whereabouts remain unknown. So, Anna 
Mary Byrne was born December 9th, 14th of 1952 in Delta, North Carolina, into a Roman Catholic family. She was the first of four children with two younger sisters, Julie and Mary, and one younger brother, Gregory. Born to Donald and Beverly Byrne, prior to her disappearance, Byrne family had moved into a house in North End neighborhood of Tacoma, Washington, located at 309 North 14th Street. Um, on the evening of August 30th of 1961, um, Burry and her three siblings were sent to bed around 8 p.m. by their parents earlier that night. Burry had eaten dinner at the nearly home of a friend. Burry and her sister, Mary, age three, shared an upstairs bedroom with brother Gregory, age five, and sister Julie, seven, shared a bedroom in the basement. At some point in the evening, several members of the house reported hearing their pet Crocker Spaniel barking in the early morning hours. And if you have a pet go Coco Spaniel uh, dog, you know those bark like those them little dogs bark like there's no tomorrow. If you hear your dog bark, especially one like that, you need to get up because there's something wrong. In the early morning of August 31st, Burr woke her parents in the first floor bedroom complaining that Mary was crying. At the time, Mary was healing from a broken arm, which was in a casket. Their, mo- their mother barely ca- recalled something soothing Mary before sending both girls back to bed, though she could not determine the time this occurred. At approximately 5.30 a.m., Beverly um, realized that Anna was missing when she- they found Mary, who was again crying alone in the ba- bedroom. The front door of the home, which had been locked, was tightly jar while a small window in the living room was open. Grass from the front lawn was found inside the house. An overturned bench was discovered against the side of the home. Upon searching the home, law enforcement notif- noticed a table of finger g- fingernails besides the open living room window was undisturbed, despite the appearance of that someone had entered the home this way. A f- footprint was found near the overturned beach outside. Law enforcement estimated that shoes that made the print were likely a kit, sneaker size 6 or 7. None of the birds' glo- clothing or other personal items were missing from the home. It was determined that Bird had left the resident wearing only her blue nightgown and a chain necklace which, with an engraved medal of Jesus and the Virgin Mary and identification tag and a medal of St. Christopher. St. Christopher. In the morning, Burr was reporting missing 100 soldiers from Fort Lewis as well as 50 National Guard. This man found Camp Murray at a located police and they searched for the child. By 11 p.m., over 75 square blocks surrounding the Burr resident had been, been researched, including wooden areas, but no sign of her was found. Additional dive teams searched Comment Bay for signs of Burr, but, not, but found nothing. Due to the lack of concrete evidence indicating in it, any abduction he occurred, the FBI only assist the case on the standby size. A report submitted in these days following Bird's disappearance came from neighbors who heard screaming and maintained from a vehicle with California license plates on the morning Bird went missing. However, when he when the driver of the vehicle was located, they explained that the noise had merely emerged from the radio and mistaken for screaming. On September eighth of nineteen sixty one, Donald and Barely voluntarily took Polygraph examinations and responded to rumors that they had that they had withheld information to their daughter's disappearance. Both were found to be truthful in their response. The following day, Burr's men- mental grandmother, Ms. Rosie Leach, posted a ten thousand reward for information leading to discovery of her granddaughter. The reward was increased to uh, five thousand after a relegation of additional funds. Over the um, over 105,000 persons were in- interviewed with the first 12 days of Bird's disappearance. On October 31st of 1961, law enforcement interviewed 31-year-old Hug Bo- Bono Morse, an ex-Marine and suspect in the 1959 murder of a 9-year-old Candy Rogers in Spokane, which I think I've spoken about her. I don't know. I have. I may have. I may have not. Let me know, guys, because I don't remember, but I think I have. Um, on June of 1962, an employee at the service station in Prolder of Port Millibol, Canada, directly across the USA border from Grant Forks, North Dakota, told law enforcement he saw girls who appeared to be Burr, accompanied by a man and woman who spoke a little too shortly to be her parents. The employee claimed the girl mentioned that she was from Takana in the winter of 1964. Law enforcement attempted to arrest Raffle Evan Lickley in Portland, Oregon, Leak had been accused of kidnapping Gary Lent Sword and was 
considered a possible suspect in Burr's disappearance, but he committed suicide with a pistol before police were able to apprehend him. Um, so now we're going to be talking about Ted Bundy and how Ted Bundy came about in this case. After serial killer Ted Bundy was apprehended in 1978, he became a suspect in Burr's disappearance. When law enforcement discovered he was a resident of Tacana at the time of her disappearance, then age 14 at the time Burry disappeared, Bundy was worked as a paper boy and delivered newspaper in Burry's neighborhood with his paper delivery route crossing near the Burr's family resident. He also had a great uncle whom he often vi visit who taught music at the University of Persian Sound, which was located several blocks from the Burry's home. Bundy would have crossed every near the house where Bundy Burry disappeared as he had to pass the 6th Avenue and in Fee Street where the office manager for the route was. The unknown size six shoes imprint found outside the window from which Barry was abducted was consistent with the teenager perpetrator. When questioned in Barry's disappearance, Bundy told the law enforcement that he wouldn't have hurt a little girl and denied involvement. Mind you, he did when he was an adult. Just let me just throw that out there. Um, Bundy told law enforcement that he wouldn't have hurt a little girl and denied involvement. In 1987, Bundy conf confessed to Arthur Robert D. Kelper that there were some murders that he would have never talked about because they were committed too close to home, too close to family, or involved victims who were very young. Very disappeared matches all, th all three of these categories. Barry's parents told the media that at this time that they believed their daughter body had been buried in execution site on the UPS campus where construction was underway in 1961. However, the claim neither they nor their daughter knew Bundy bravely stated that after two letter exchange with Bundy while he was on death row, he avoided the real question, take, talking instead, instead about the Green River murders and rolled events. In one conspiracy, con Bundy insisted that in 1961 he was a normal 14 year old boy. I did not wander the streets late at night. I did not steal cars. I had absolutely no desire to harm anyone. I'm not. Gunnell later told crime writer Anna Rule that he believed he saw Bundy in a dish on the UPS campus the morning of his daughter's disappearance. In 2011, contact evidence from the Barry crime scene was compared to DNA samples of Bundy, but testing failed to link him to the Barry resident due to the fact that a field DNA profile could not be produced from the evidence. Um, in July of 1963, nearly two years of the Barry's disappearance, her parents adopted an infant girl named Laura. Barry's family had memorial service for her in 1999. Donald Burry died in 2003 at age 77. Beverly Burry died of concessive heart failure of September 13 of 2008 after her resident in Tacoma. So both of her parents never were able to find justice for their child and find the body of the child and it is so sad and to be honest i really don't think bundy had nothing to do with it i don't believe that he was the whole i was a normal child 14 did not run outside and steal cars because especially after what he did end up doing as an adult like i said he did i think his last victim was a child so yeah i don't believe that whole I was 14 year old normal child no mr bundy no you weren't i mean you were probably doing stuff that i mean you said it yourself sir that there was just cases that you didn't want to talk about because they were too close to home and the victims were young so i really don't even know what to believe sorry even though you gone i don't know what to believe but it's just this case of all the missing cases this one to me is really like I don't know. It's just like. I don't have words for it. I really don't. Because it's just so confusing. It's so unique. Like. I don't know. See I'm the type of person. That I am a heavy sleeper. Like I'm really. I'm a heavy sleeper. But. If I hear noises. Or like if I hear my dog barking. In the middle of the night, I'm going to get up. I'll be scared, but I'm going to get up. Or I'm just going to be in my room and, like, just call someone. Like, if I'm by myself with my daughter. So, yeah. Um, 
it's just crazy but if you know anything if you lived in that area um if you remember seeing anything go ahead and call the tacoma police um anything matters anything anything matters no matter how small it is anything matters and like i think every true crime youtuber and you know and even true crime fanatic says people know people know and they will talk eventually somebody knows what happened somebody knows a person that committed this crime and back then they were probably just scared to come out if you are still alive and you're that type and you're that person that knows and you know the person that did it please please say something because her parents are gone but she still has family members that are still looking for her and they want to bury her next to her family and her parents and it's just sad to know that she's out there somewhere cold alone probably trying to figure out how to me personally i believe that once you die your soul especially i feel like if you had a traumatic death like if you lost your life you know traumatically and unexpected i feel like your soul stays on earth and you will not rest in peace until you figure out why you're not here anymore or what happened if you if somebody took your life i feel like you're in the person did not having gotten caught i feel like you will not rest in peace until that person gets caught or at least that person people know who the person was and to you are found um there was a case of um actually savannah savannah i cannot remember her last name but i will put her on my description of her youtube go subscribe to her youtube she's amazing um she talked about a case a few weeks ago of this um woman who solved her own crime she solved her own crime she um appeared and she basically took over somebody else's body that worked with her and i'm not going to tell you who did it because i want you to go see her the video but um, basically she she took somebody she took over somebody's body her ghost took over somebody's body and she would tell her husband basically she was telling her husband the, the lady that passed away was telling the the husband hey this is my name this is who killed me this is who you know this is how it happened this is the guy that did it please please go catch him go talk to the police and this lady did not give up like the the woman will wake up and her husband will tell her what she said how long she was gone for and she was in shock like she just could not remember she was like she could not remember at all like nothing she's like what so she finally decided to go to the cops and the detectives and she told detectives things that even the public did not know that the only two people that would known what happened was the murderer and the victim and when they heard her they literally paid attention because mind you back then me if i think back then if somebody would come to me like yeah i could solve her you know the lady that got murdered she came and told me who did it and how it did i would have been like no something wrong with you we need to go take you to the crazy hospital or something because that's just not make sense but the way she told the cops and the detectives how she died who committed the murders the cops were had luckily paid attention to her they listened to her and that's and she solved her her own crime and after um the lady said that once the killer was um behind bars and her case was solved she never had that problem again she was able to sleep through the night never heard from the the girl uh, from the woman again and why because her spirit was finally resting in peace because the person that committed her murder 
was behind bars. And I think, I believe that it's, it happens. I believe that if you die a terrible death or somebody commits, kills you, and that person does not, if you don't get justice, you will not rest in peace until you and your family gets justice. And I think, I believe in ghosts. I believe in ghosts. I believe that there's places, um, landmarks and buildings that are haunted because some landmarks and buildings have a history behind it. I live in Houston, Texas, and in Gavison, yeah, I think it's the whole island is haunted, to be honest with you. <laughs> Um, there's one of uh, that a hurricane happened and a nun and uh, some of the orphan died and I think the beach is haunted where it happened I think the kids and the nuns come out at night and they're still there I haven't seen it personally but I believe it so if you're from Galveston let me know if you've seen it but yeah I will be here next Friday with the news case, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you on Friday.